Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. My beloved, there are many things in the Bible that people don't understand, and today I want to clarify one of those points. Our title today is, Love is Not Jealous, So Why is God? My beloved, the argument goes something like this. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8 indicates that God is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4 says that God is not jealous. And yet, in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5, along with several other passages, it's revealed that God is a jealous God. So how, a skeptic might ask, can God be jealous when several verses say God is love? And 1 Corinthians says that love is not jealous. Simply put, if love is not jealous and God is love, then God logically cannot be called jealous. Or conversely, my beloved, if love is not jealous and God is jealous, then God cannot be considered loving, right? That's what it sounds like. So how can these verses be anything but contradictory? Well, my beloved, the term jealousy most often carries a negative connotation in this 21st century America. We pity the man who is jealous of his co-worker's success. We frown upon families who react to a neighbor's newly found fortune by becoming overcome with jealousy. And we are perturbed to hear of a jealous husband who distrusts his wife and questions every possible wrong action that she may take, even going so far as demanding that she never leave the house without him. Add to these feelings about jealousy what a various New Testament passage can mean to those who say different things about the topic. And one can understand why some might sincerely question why God is described at times as jealous. Now, the Apostle Paul admonished the Christians in Rome to behave properly and to put off strife and jealousy. That's in Romans chapter 13 and verse 13. To the church at Corinth, Paul expressed concern that when he came to their city, he might find them involved in such sinful things as gossip, strife, and jealousy. You can read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. And as noted, he explicitly told them that love is not jealous in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse 4. James also wrote about the sinfulness of jealousy, saying that where it exists, there is disorder and every evil thing. You can read that in James chapter 3 and verse 16. One religious writer described such jealousy as an infantile resentment springing from unmortified covetousness, which expresses itself in envy, malice, and meanness of action. It seems more often than not that both the New Testament and the moral code of modern society speak of jealousy in a negative light. But the truth is, my beloved, sometimes jealousy can be spoken of in a good sense. The word jealous is translated in the Old Testament from the Hebrew word gina, and in the New Testament from the Greek word zelos. The root idea behind both words is that of warmth or heat. The Hebrew word for jealousy carries with it the idea of redness of the face that accompanies strong emotion, whether right or wrong. Depending upon the usage of the word, it can be used to represent both good and an evil passion. Three times in 1 Corinthians, Paul used this word in a good sense to encourage his brethren to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. You can see that in Corinthians or 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 and verse 39. So Paul obviously was not commanding the Corinthians to sin, but to do something that was good and worthwhile. 
Later, when writing to the church at Corinth, the Apostle Paul was even more direct in showing how there was such a thing as godly jealousy, where he stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2-4, through 4, I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. My beloved, Paul's burning desire was for the church at Corinth to abide in the love of God as a friend of the bridegroom who was none other than Jesus Christ. Paul used some of the strongest language possible to encourage the bride of Christ at Corinth to be pure and faithful. In a similar way, Jehovah expressed his love for Israel in the Old Testament by proclaiming to be a jealous God. You can read that in Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 and Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 24. He was not envious of the Israelites' accomplishments or possessions, matter of fact, but was communicating his strong love for them with a strong language. The scriptures depict a spiritual marriage between Jehovah and his people. Sadly, during the period of the divided kingdom, both Israel and Judah were guilty of playing the harlot. And you can read that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. God called Israel's idolatrous practice adultery. And for this reason, he had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. You can read that in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8. This is not the lunatic fury of a rejected or supplanted suitor, but a zeal to protect a love relationship. Jehovah felt for Israel as the most affectionate husband could do for his spouse and was jealous for their fidelity because he willed their invariable happiness. Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6 is further proof that love and jealousy are not always opposed to each other. To her beloved, the Shumamite said, put me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as severe as Sheol. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. In this passage, love and jealousy actually are parallel to convey the same basic meaning, that aside from one's love for God, marital love is the strongest, most unyielding and invisible force in human experience. In this sense, being a jealous husband or wife is a good thing. As we note that married persons who felt no jealousy at the intrusion of a lover or an adulterer into their home would surely be lacking in moral perception. For the exclusiveness of marriage is the essence of marriage. My beloved, truly, love has a jealous side. There is a sense in which one legitimately can be jealous for what rightly belongs to him. You can read about that in Numbers chapter 25. Such is especially true in a marriage relationship. Israel was God's chosen people. You can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. He had begun to set them apart as a special nation by blessing their father Abraham. You can read that in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 27. He blessed the Israelites with much numerical growth while living in Egypt. You can read that in Exodus chapter 1, verse 7, verses 12 and verses 19. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. He delivered them from Egyptian bondage. And you can, in Exodus chapter 
3 to 12. And, among other things, he gave them written revelation, which, if obeyed, would bring them spiritually closer to Jehovah, and even would make them physically superior to other nations, in that they would be spared from various diseases. You can read that in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Like a bird that watches over her eggs, and young with jealousy, preventing other birds from entering her nest, God watched over the Israelites with righteous jealousy, unwilling to tolerate the presence of false gods among his people. You can read that in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 6, or in Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 to 16. So, my beloved, such godly jealousy, as spoken about in Second Corinthians 11 and 2, was not what Paul had in mind in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. So, my beloved, love is not jealous. So, why is God So you need to read the Bible to understand the truth about why God is jealous and what jealousy actually refers to. My beloved, know that God loves you very much and he is jealous over you. And he wants that none should perish, but that all should receive eternal life. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you can do so today. My beloved, you must repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to be the Savior of your soul. And when you do this, you will have peace with God through Jesus Christ through all eternity. God bless you, my beloved, and thank you for being with us today. And know that God loves you and cares about you and that he has a plan for your life. Please continue to keep on listening to our broadcast. 